Good morning. I'm Philip Thakur, Editor of Education World. Good morning. I'm Sumya Yasmin, Managing Editor. Well, two years after the national education policy was announced, looks like at last there's some movement, especially in higher education. Of course, uh, from the government side, the UGC has gone into overdrive. It has announced, you know, several, uh, you know, initiatives mm -hmm. uh, to uh, implement the national education policy, including the, you know, academic bank of credits. Uh, it's also introduced dual degree programs, multiple entry and exit options, and most recently allowed uh, foreign universities to set up uh, campuses, campuses, physical in campuses within India. Yeah. And our cover story uh, this month uh, talks about this yes. sea change in higher education. And especially uh, though we, you know, uh, welcome uh, the changes announced by UGC, uh, our story focuses on private varsities catalyzing the sea change yeah. in higher education. And many of these private universities are competing also in world university rankings. They are aspiring mm. uh, to be uh, to be uh, you know ranked among the best in in, in the world. Yes. Uh, universities. And that's what's really created. created. That's what's really university. Yeah. Shulani University. They are already now being ranked in the top thousand universities mm. uh, across the world. So that spirit of competition and that spirit of uh, uh, you know desire and ambition to be best in the world among India's uh, you know at least the uh, top slide yeah, 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 of private yeah, of universities course. is good. That's a new sentiment because yeah. in the India, in the past, you always felt, well, we are like this only. Why should we compete? And what we call Indian exceptionalism was always invoked to say, no, we can't, com we can't compare us with them. We believe in access and equity. They believe in academic excellence. And we, we feel these kind of uh, comparisons are not warranted. And one of the things that we've... Uh, criticized in our story is that the infantilization of uh, uh, higher education all these years because you had a, always severe controls on uh, very senior academics yes. there's no need uh, they know what they're doing why was it necessary for government to always supervise them and uh, always uh, tell them what to do approve their syllabuses so one of the things that we have done here is we've uh, we've approved we think it's there's no, we've argued that there's no need for uh, such a big uh, supervisory structure, especially for higher education. Yes, they should be given, I mean, to be the best, you need to have autonomy in everything, in, you know, in your curriculum design, in uh, financial autonomy, uh, uh, autonomy to appoint whoever you want, yes. uh, autonomy to have your own admission processes. Autonomy is, is, is the prerequisite of being the best in of the world. Of excellence, indeed. Yes, yes. and uh, therefore one of the things that we have criticized in this story is that, you know, in the heart of the MD. new education policy 2020, there's a contradiction. Mm. On the one hand, you have a very elaborate supervisory structure. Another part of the policy says that every college must become an autonomous uh, 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 institution of learning and eventually become a autonomous university. Now, if you have such a big supervisory infrastructure, yeah. at the same time you're pushing autonomy now. There's a dichotomy there. Um, and we've got much else to live in our uh, issue this time. Let's uh, tell our uh, readers and viewers about it. Of course, our very informative education news section. We have a very insightful and uh, excellent education news from Delhi where we talk about what we're talking about, higher education. Mm -hmm about the, the ascendant the new of, of higher, higher education, education. Uh, Mr. Jagdish Kumar and Jagdish Kumar was the chairman of UGC who's spearheading uh, these uh, changes uh, in yes. higher education including the entry of foreign universities and uh, in, oh, in Karnataka, in Karnataka uh, we talk about you know how there's going to be exams at class 5 and class 8 for children that this is going to be a good thing or it's going to be a bad thing. Yes. Of course, in West Bengal, the never-ending saga of uh, tech uh, teacher scams and how it's uh, panning out and affecting teacher appointments. And recruitment, so, that's a scandal that's been going on ever since the first yes, term of Mrs. Yes. Ban uh, Ms. Banerjee who became the chief minister yes. some 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. So that, uh, and that's created a big problem because there is no recruitment of teachers for a very long Absolutely. time. Our editorial page, you know, we believe that it's time to settle the uh, Indo-China uh, 
border problem which has been pending for the last 60 mm -hmm. years because it's taking away a lot of resources away from education and public health. So public education and public health. Mm -hmm. And the second one is about uh, the second one is about COVID pandemic management lessons. What we learned from the lockdown of education institutions last time and how we shouldn't repeat them. Yes. And uh, we have uh, two very interesting pictorial essays this time uh, in December, that's last month. In the last week of December, we held a very successful early childhood education conference, which was held a uh, co-terminously with our Education World India Preschool Rankings. Preschool Rankings, yes. yes. So we had some excellent panel discussions on the day where we, talk, we spoke about, you know, uh, implementation of uh, the national curriculum framework, which has just been released. For by foundational the stage, for foundational education. stage education, why it's important, how it's going to shape early that's childhood. A, that's education. a 300 page document, yes. 350 page document. Yes. And we also had very insightful, uh, you know, uh, one on one sessions with uh, highly, Interviews, yes. Yes, highly uh, uh, reputed early childhood educators. The next day, we also had a very successful education world school education conclave we, where we again discussed some very important burning issues nationally important education issues like you know the QF the common university entrance test and its impact on higher secondary yes. schooling about you know impact of uh, government regulation about you know uh, the the impact of uh, you know regulating fees etc so very again, no, no, it's very important to tell our readers we are the only people who are doing this in this country. In the media, the coverage that you get on education is very, very perfunctory. It skims the surface. Now, obviously, lay people are not going to read this, but certainly practitioners of education, teachers, school leaders, etc., have to pay more attention to these issues. Because one of the great problems in India is that the academic community is like totally divorced from the policy formulation process. Mm -hmm which is not a very healthy thing for the economic, for the education system. On those same lines, Dilip, again, two very good, intelligent essays uh, written by Dr. Supindra Kulkarni, yes. uh, the former advisor, press advisor to Atal Bihari Vajpayee, has written an excellent article uh, reiterating, reiterating what you say in the, the China. China, why India and China must you know, resolve the border conflict and why these uh, two great civilizations must become friends again. And in our teacher to teacher column, we have a very, very uh, excellent essay written uh, by a US based educator on why it's time to transition to agile classrooms. And a great people section uh, where we uh, mm. have you know, profiles on uh, the movers and shakers uh, of Indian and international education. Mm -hmm. So we have Sean Co Covey there. We have He's the son of the famous Seven Habits. Steve, Mr. Stephen Covey yes. and how he is, you know, is popularizing his Leader in Me program in India. And then we talk about the new Harrow International School, which is going to come yeah. in right here in Bangalore. The uh, Harrow, the use. famous Harrow uh, School in England, where Jawaharlal Nehru, Winston Churchill, and others went to uh, went to school, is establishing campus right here in Bangalore. I think that's a very big event, and we profile the headmaster of that school. Yes, Mr. Andrew Lee, and there's also a, a, a profile on the new AFS India director, the Bia Bajil, as also the AFS American Field Service. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, we also have our Education World Grand Jury India Preschool Rankings this time, where a jury of you know a, a eminent, eminent educators have uh, selected India's top ten preschools which have nominated themselves for several uh, category of jury awards they live. Uh, this includes uh, future ready preschools, uh, categories such as campus design, innovative pedagogy, best technology, integration, nature friendly uh, preschools, design thinking leaders, yeah, I think it's important to, uh, to tell our viewers. So these are preschools with doing things which are novel. Yes, indeed. Right. Yeah. yeah, and uh, to conclude uh, our book review section, uh, a very uh, good book review on uh, Mr. Krishna Kumar's latest book, Smaller Citizens Writings on the Making of Indian Citizens, mm -hmm. where he talks about, you know, uh, the child within the education system, teachers, mm -hmm. and uh, what's wrong with it, especially in the light of the pandemic. I had a very interesting uh, book by my, my friend Jerry Rao, the famous uh, former Citibank uh, Emphasis CEO. 
he was a champion of private enterprise. He, he advocates that we should relook at Gandhiji's trusteeship concept, where the rich hold, generate and hold their wealth in trusteeship for the poor, for the benefit of society. Uh, then, of course, our new, most popular page, the postscript page, where they talk about, you know, in uh, Karnataka and, a lot, and other parts of the country, there are a lot of adults, uncles and aunties, who are real killjoys who are like making life misery for younger people. I think they should sort of take their foot off the accelerator a bit. And then we talk about the soft power opportunities of Indian cinema, new Indian cinema, old Indian cinema, which is very, very popular uh, in uh, other parts of the world. In fact, recently there was an interview with the president of Guyana, which I saw on television, where he, which Guyana, by the way, has an Indian majority population. And they are really sold on Indian movies. And so it's a great opportunity there. And uh, the other thing is, we, are, we also do a write-up on one Mr. Ramesh Kumar, who resigned from NDTV before Mr. Adani took it over, on the assumption that Mr. Adani would uh, only took it over to make sure that he exited from the case of a rather <laughs> runaway ego. Anyway, anyway, uh, that's education world for you all. But as usual, before we go, a very interesting cover story again in parents' world, where we talk about and we advise parents how you can protect children from the dangers of the dark net. Internet. Yes. The internet is a wonderful invention, but it has this dark side. It be a can blessing make life, and a curse. can make life miserable for a lot of young yes. people. So we've given some uh, very advice to parents. good advice to parents from cyber security experts, from child psychologists, child experts, who say how you can you know, protect children uh, from the dangers of the dark net. Yes, well, that's all. Till Thank next you. time. Thank you.